In our last video, we created this very simple circle using GLSL, and I only wrote the code without explaining what the code is actually doing. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and explain what each line actually does. First, let's make this a bit smaller so we can see more of the code. And now let's go through it. So these first three lines, you should already know what they do because I've explained it in previous videos. And if you've forgotten, please go ahead and check that out now. Line five is definitely completely new to you. So let's explain that. The, the uniform keyword kind of means two things. First of all, it means you're passing in a value from outside into the fragment shader. So this could be a value from a vertex shader or just a program you're running, you're passing a value into it. And the reason we're using the word uniform is because the value for this variable here, U resolution, will be exactly the same for each pixel that this code is run on. And that's why it's called uniform. So this U resolution here is actually the resolution of our canvas that we have. So whatever this is right now, I don't know what it is, say 500 by 1000, that is what is being passed into here as a vector. So essentially it could be something like, and like I said, that would be the same for each pixel. This circle shape function returns a float. And the reason it returns a float is because this step function returns a float. This value variable I added uses a distance function. And what the distance function does is it gets the distance between two points on the canvas. So what it's doing is getting this position, which is passed in as the argument to this function, and it's comparing the distance between that position and this vec2 over here. So what is this vec2 and what is this position? In this circle shape function, which is called over here, it's passing in the pixel coordinate. And this pixel coordinate is being calculated by the gl underscore frag chord and the u resolution. So the gl underscore frag chord is basically the coordinate of each pixel in the canvas. And GLSL starts from the bottom left first. So it's going from here, which will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and passing that in one by one. But the GL frag chord, as you can see, has more than just X and Y. What we've done here is we've only got the X and Y value from GL frag chord. And if we look at the documentation, we will see that it has four things because it's a vec four by default. It has X, Y, Z, so that's the depth, and that can be also set using GeoFrag depth, but I won't talk about that too much, and one over the width, which I'm not sure what that's used for, but it's being passed back for whatever reason. So we have these four values, and we only want the X and Y. The way we've retrieved that is with something called swizzling, which I'll explain later on, but if we wanted more, we could get the Z, but currently we just want the X and Y value, which as I said, will be zero, zero, or one, zero, or two, zero. And what we're doing is we're dividing it by the resolution so that we could normalize it. And what I mean by normalizing it is making sure that it's a value between zero and one. Let me show you a quick example of that with this tool over here. So with a Mac calculator, if I wanted to normalize 50%, I would do 50 divided by 100. And that will give me 0.5. So in this, in this example, say we have a coordinate being set by the GL frag chord, which could be something like 250 as the X coordinate and 500 as the Y coordinate. If we divide that by whatever the resolution is, it will give us 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, which will be right in the center. So with a pixel coordinate of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, that will be a slap bang in the middle. And that is what is being passed as the position argument into here. So because the GL frag chord value will be different for each and every pixel, that is going through that one by one and passing that position into here and saying, okay, what is the distance between that specific coordinate that's been set here and 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which as we said before, is the normalized value of the center of the canvas. So essentially how far is each pixel from the center? And if we were to comment this bit out and just return this float instead, you'll see here that we have this circular gradient. And so what the distance function is doing here is saying, okay, how far away is this pixel from the center? And, and it's returning a, a large value for if it's very far away, so 1.0. And if it's very close to the center, it returns 0, 0. Now, if we think about RGB color values, we know that 1.0 three times is white and 0, 0.0 
three times is black. So if the distance between that pixel and the center is close, as we can see in, in here, the closer pixels will be 0, 0.0, then the value will be black. And the further away they are, the, the more the value would be a percentile between 0 and 1. So it could be 0 0.5, 0 0.4, whatever. And the value will become more and more gray until it gets to the edge and it gets to white. So as I said before, the value in the center will be 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way until we get to 1.0 at the very end. So if we put everything back to how it was, we know that this value here is returning the distance, which will be a float between 0 0.0 and 1.0. And what the step function is doing is it's saying the two values that are passed in, so the edge and the float, if, if the x value, which is here, is less than the edge value, then return a one, if not return a zero. And that's all this is doing. If you pass in two floats, it will return float. If you pass in vec two, it will return vec two. And in our case here, because this value is a float and the radius is also a float, this is returning a float. So it's saying if this value is less than the radius, return a one. If it's more than the radius, return a zero. And in our case, our circle width or our circle radius is hard coded to 0 0.2. So whatever normalized value this is, if it's less than 0 0.2, it's going to return a 0, 0, which will be black. And if it's more than 0 0.2, it's going to return a 1, 0, which is white. And that's all the step function is doing. So if you remember that radial gradient that I showed you before, the closer the value was to the center, it'd be black. And the further away it was, it'd be more white. Well, this is kind of having a hard cut at 0 0.2. So anything outside of 0 0.2 will be one. Anything inside of 0 0.2 will be, will be zero, which is black. And if we were to change this radius here, you'll see that will change as well. So as I've mentioned before, the circle shape is only either returning a 1.0 or a 0, 0.0. And with that in mind, the color here would be 1.0 or 0, 0.0. And as I've mentioned before, it will either be black or white. So this is essentially representing the color that is returned by this circle shape function. Now this is using a technique called swizzling, which means if I return one value in here, it can assume that because it's a VEC3, it's gonna have the same value three times. So whatever this value will be, either one or zero in this case, it will have that three times, and with swizzling, we'll put that vec3 inside here. So essentially, I could remove a whole line and just do this, and it's the same thing. Okay, I hope you found that explanation useful, and I actually have some homework for you. So with that explanation in mind, how would we go ahead and change the background color and the circle color of this canvas over here? So try and figure that out for the next video, and I will show you the answer in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you don't want to wait till next week to find the solution to the homework, go ahead and check out the link to the Udemy course in the description of this video.